I hate her on a cellular level. At night, I'm unable to sleep as I lie there, grinding my teeth and dreaming of the day when she is made to parade naked through the streets of every town in Britain. The fact is that it's a, it's a real human being who has experienced so much hatred, including misogyny, at the hands of the media. He must know this is going to exacerbate that. Hello, lovely people. My name is Emma. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. <laughs> this is going to be my last video of the year. I'll be honest, I expected it to be on a slightly more jovial topic. I was going to do just like a comments video or, I don't know, just something chill. Um, but uh, as often happens with the kind of content that I make and the kind of stuff I talk about, the, the news arrived and I am incensed. And so we're going to talk about misogyny for the, <laughs> for, for the last video of the year. Cheerful. Put my lights on, this will make me feel better. They've gotten a bit wiggly wambly out of place, but that's fine. We can live with it, right? There we go. That's a bit more fun. Hooray. So we're going to talk a little bit about a column in the Sun newspaper that a, uh, a British celebrity, a chap called Jeremy Clarkson wrote uh, just the other day. If you're not familiar with Jeremy Clarkson, Yes, British TV presenter. He sort of made his he 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 blew up big with a show called Top Gear, sort of car show. You've probably heard of it. It was a BBC show. Uh, prior to him getting sacked from there, and he hasn't worked with the BBC since. And that was because this is just background to his character, I suppose. It's not technically relevant. Um, but he was sacked from the BBC and stopped working there after he punched a producer in a row over dinner. Part of the reason I mention this is because a lot of the response I've seen to the issue we're about to talk about, the present one, um, what he wrote in his column, is similar to how a lot of people, including his co-presenters, reacted to that violent outburst in the past, which was basically, oh, everybody has a bad day. This, I, I believe it was James May that said something. I'll, I'll double check and leave uh, links down below, but um, some of them were basically saying, you know, everybody has bad days. You know, if he was like a footballer in the pub or like a rock star, people wouldn't bat an eyelid. Which is just not what the public's general attitude towards violence is anymore. That just screamed out of touch to me. And that, that is the main thing I feel about Jeremy Clarkson is, is he is out of touch. He lives in his own sphere and just isn't... He's not keeping up with the rest of the world. So he's always kind of played a sort of caricature of of the arsehole he's always played up being a bit a bit mean a bit harsh sort of like walking that line between bantering and just being an awful person for many people he walks the the line on the okay side of you know humor uh for many people not a fan i'm personally not a fan <laughs> so in his uh column in the sun he wrote the following i hate her he was talking about Meghan markle I hate her. Not like I hate Nicola Sturgeon or Rose West, specifically, specifically women he hates. I hate her on a cellular level. At night, I'm unable to sleep as I lie there, grinding my teeth and dreaming of the day when she is made to parade naked through the streets of every town in Britain while the crowds chant shame and throw lumps of excrement at her. Everyone who's my age thinks the same way. Jeremy Clarkson is 62 years old. So if you're anywhere around Jeremy Clarkson's age, let me know if you do think the same way down below, or if, like me, you think he is horribly, disgustingly out of touch with reality. So clearly he was making a reference to the TV show Game of Thrones, in which that happens, and in the show, it's a very uncomfortable scene. It's not like a, way that character that we all hate had this punishment and it's funny, it's, it's awful to watch, like it's an emotional scene because it's a bad thing that shouldn't have happened in the show. So he seems to have missed that and because I guess he hates women? Don't know for sure, I just think it's interesting that he's hating, he's listing all the women that he hates in this article before he talks about what he dreams of happening to Meghan Markle. Um, I'm gonna have to put a misogyny warning in the in the description um, and in a pinned comment because the, this whole thing is really very very disturbing and if you've been on the receiving end of misogyny like this uh, it's, really, it's really hard to read and talk about. One can make guesses and assume that maybe he he does just hate women and therefore he had a more positive view of that scene in Game of Thrones and thinks that that's just funny. I don't feel that it's necessary for 99% of people, I don't feel that it's necessary to explain why this is bad, why this is horrible. Just even if you forget the misogyny, you forget the... um. 
you know, the, the social cultural implications of this as a man with a huge following. Just on the face of it, what a horrible thing to say about another human being in a, in a public newspaper. Just, just nasty, just vile. I hate her so much. I don't know if they've met. I assume this is largely coming out of, um, there was a documentary about Harry and Meghan. I'm not interested in sharing my opinion on either of them, on the royal family. I don't care. I'm not watching the show. It doesn't interest me. I don't think that opinions on these people or what you think of them as essentially characters that they're portrayed in the media because they're real human beings and nobody deserves this treatment regardless of what you think about them. So I'm not interested in giving an opinion of what these people might be like. Just just to have the gall to be like, I hate this person so much I lie awake and dream about awful things happening to them. What I suspect, my suspicion here, and this is not to give him an out, this is not like a this is not an excuse for him, but this is what I suspect might be part of the reasoning for him not realising that this is a stupid, terrible thing to do. Because Jeremy Clarkson has always had this uh, character, this, you know, caricature of himself where he is the asshole. he says the, the thing we're all thinking but are too polite to say out loud, you know, that, that kind of character, he probably has had a lot of horrible stuff written about him. He's probably read, I hate Jeremy Clarkson, I hope he gets minced up by a, a wood chipper whatever <laughs> i'm trying to think of something something mean uh but I, I can't quite it's hard to achieve the level that he got my point being that he's probably seen a lot of stuff written about him because he is so so horrible sometimes in his humor he's probably seen people talk about him in that way and it's again i don't think anybody deserves any particularly violent hatred or anything like that but that's sort of the decision that he made by choosing to be a, an asshole character, by choosing to make that his career, by, by being deliberately provocative in that way. So maybe he kind of has this idea that that's how people talk about each other if they don't like somebody. Like, I, I don't like this public figure because they stand for X, Y, and Z, therefore I'll talk about how much I loathe them and how I want these awful things to happen to them. So that, that's just a postulation, that's just an idea that I think might be part of it. I don't know for sure. I'm not inside his head, thank fuck. He did, he did make an apology. Uh, I, I hesitate to call it an apology because really it's... A, apology is a strong word for, for what it is. Let me find it for you. Oh dear, I'd rather put my foot in it. This is my Jeremy Clarkson voice. In a column I wrote about Megan, I made a clumsy reference to a scene in Game of Thrones, and this has gone down badly with a great many people. 6,000 uh, formal complaints to the sun. 6,000. I'm horrified to have caused such hurt, and I shall be more careful in the future. This is one of the worst apologies, one of the worst apology-adjacent statements, because it's not an apology. He doesn't say sorry for what he's done, not remotely. He, he doesn't apologise. He says he'll be more careful with how he phrases his thoughts about the women that he hates, I guess. I was so incensed that I replied <laughs> to Jeremy Clarkson on Twitter. It's it's like, it's almost phrasing it like, like the problem was that people don't really remember Game of Thrones. Like I mentioned earlier, that scene was was horrible. It was an awful thing. That's the point of it, that it's, it's this barbaric, you know, sort of medieval torture. You know, it's it's sexual abuse. It, it's It's awful. And we feel uncomfortable watching it, and that's why that scene is powerful. And the acting in it is particularly powerful. It's Lena um, Hedy is uh, Hedy or Hedy? I can't remember how her name's pronounced. She's wonderful. Um, but yeah, the point of that scene is that it's incredibly hard hitting, and we don't like it. Jeremy Clarkson doesn't seem to realise that. Yeah, it's not that our oh, people don't really remember Game of Thrones. It's that this is it is misogynistic. It it is violent and sexual. And it's hurled a real human being who is just living her life, who isn't, you know, didn't come across favourably to him in a documentary. Th th that's a real person. I think there's a disconnect, e even with Jeremy Clarkson as a broadcaster, and the m fact that this is the case is, is bizarre to me. Because usually when you are at the receiving end of a lot of hatred, you kind of understand that there is a human being on the other end. There is definitely a disconnect between hate and writing about someone, especially, you know, on the internet, in a newspaper, whatever, and the actual person at the receiving end. It's it's easy to be like, oh, I hate them, as if they are a character. 
And to be honest, if this column was about a fictional character, I still think it would probably be a bit much for most people, and it probably still would have gotten complaints. But it wouldn't have made the news, I don't think. I don't think it would be anywhere near as big a deal if he had been like, I hate this character, I dream of them getting the treatment from this uh, scene in Game of Thrones. I think that's sort of like, yeah, whatever. The fact is that it's a, it's a real human being who has experienced so much hatred, including misogyny, at the hands of the media. He must know this is going to exacerbate that. He, he's not remotely sorry for what he said. He's sorry that, well, he's, he's horrified that people are upset enough to have written in to complain to the sun. That's what it is. And that's what he said. It's not... He, he's never said sorry. He just was like, oh dear. Whoopsie poopsie. Here's why it's an actual problem. Sometimes you can be an asshole, and it's okay. I kind of believe that. To be honest, I think that you don't have to be a nicey nice person all the time. And I think that if you are, say, in the privacy of your own home, with people very close to you whose boundaries you know, you can make horrible jokes. I, I think that's that's kind of okay. And that's why, you know, we always, we, we all sort of joke online about how friends bully each other. Friends are especially mean to each other. It's because we know each other's boundaries and the fact that, you know, often the joke is that we would never think or say something so so mean. And so that's why it's, it's the shock value that provides humour. But that's because you're in an enclosed circle of people where you feel safe doing so and you know people's boundaries. You don't write that in a newspaper. <laughs> Sing around at home, watching a documentary and being like, God, I just, I hate her. The way she comes across, I hate her. She should have the shame thing. Fine. I, I, I think there's probably some misogyny at the root of that. But whatever, you're free to say whatever you want. Just, w even from just a, even if you genuinely think that, if you genuinely feel that way about women and, and this particular woman, just not a smart career move to put that in the newspaper. And so here is, yes, here is why it's a problem. Because Jeremy Clarkson still has an enormous fan base. And the more, unfortunately, and I, I don't really know what the solution is to this problem. This is kind of a, a problem culturally that I don't know how we solve. The more pushback somebody gets, the more complaints somebody gets for their behaviour, for their words, and Jeremy Clarkson has had a lot of these for various actions, the more they become a victim in the eyes of their staunch followers. He is a victim of cancel culture. You can't say anything these days. On his apology tweet, I saw people say things like, and this is the one that stuck in my head, satire is dead in the UK. Satire. Let me just let me just pull up a definition of satire for sanity's sake, in case I've been misunderstanding satire my whole life. The use of humour, irony, exaggeration or ridicule to expose and criticise people's stupidity or vices. There's there's nothing about his statement of what he lies awake dreaming about happening to Meghan Markle. There's, there's nothing in there that hits me as satire, even remotely. It, it's quite clear from the way he's talking that those are his genuine feelings. Maybe it's an exaggeration for, for comedy because he thinks that's funny. But he clearly does feel that he hates her to the point where he's using these exaggerated claims about lying awake, thinking about her being abused that like that that's not satire <laughs> that's that's his actual views and so his followers will will continue saying things like this you can't say anything nowadays and poor jeremy clarkson getting hounded over a joke it was just a joke it was just funny and more and more people will see him saying those things and feel vindicated in being sexist in their own lives right he's attempting to make light and a, and a joke and be funny out of wishing sexual abuse on a real person, a real woman. Do you see why that's a problem? Men's violence against women is a problem globally. It, it, is, it is a huge problem. Femicide is a, is a real thing. And I'll leave some, again, I'll leave some links down below. This, this just fuels that fire and then there's this there's this so, so there's this it's just a joke it's just humor doesn't doesn't matter if it inspires 
violence, if it contributes to a misogynistic society, that's still a bad outcome. And in my opinion, that's a pretty low bar for humour. I'll put the meme on screen that I like. Yeah, I got a dark sense of humour. Sexism. It's not clever, it's not funny, it's just thinking of the most horrible thing you can imagine happening to a woman. And then she has to read that and deal with it, because now, of course, everybody's talking about it in the news. So that, so the other side of the, um, the it's a joke, you know, ha ha, it's satire, deal with it coin, and this comes from my personal experience as well as a, as a, as a woman on the internet, as a woman who is a vaguely public face. I'm a micro-influencer. Did you know that? <laughs> the flip side of this is, well, you're in the public eye, you've got to expect this to happen. You've got you've got to see this coming. The first and most important point to make regarding that is that that doesn't change the outcome in terms of uh, making violence against women and hatred against women more acceptable societally. That doesn't that doesn't change anything to do with that. It's just about you personally should have to deal with it. And I hear this a lot whenever I share something disgusting, some kind of sexual harassment I've received, anything like that. There will be at least one person who is like, well. You chose to exist vaguely publicly, so, I mean, you've got to expect sexual harassment. And no, <laughs> the, point of, the point of fighting for women's rights and people's rights in general is that nobody should be expected to deal with sexual harassment. Nobody should be expected to deal with violence. That, that shouldn't be just part of the deal if you want to be in a certain creative field or something. Meghan Markle chose to be an actor, I would assume, because of what acting is like and, and all the actors I know, I would assume that like most actors, Meghan Markle got into it because she loves the craft and can't imagine doing anything else. That's part of the decisions that lead to that journey might be thinking, okay, I will probably have to deal with negativity from the public. Being sexually harassed being abused, having violence incited against you shouldn't be like a given part of that that they they deserve for for wanting to do something that happens to be in the public sphere. That's just not how that works. And if you are a creative person, if you're a woman, a female presenting, and you experience these issues because you want to do something that is that you love and happens to be public facing, it is it is not your fault. It is not something that you should expect and have to deal with. There are ways to mitigate it. And yes, you do have to be prepared for it. It does unfortunately have to be part of the decision. But that doesn't make it your fault. That doesn't make it okay. And the fact that people use this as an excuse for other people's behavior, like, well, if I wasn't going to say it, then somebody else would because you're on the internet. That's what the kind of people that sexually harass me, that's what they tell me. While you're you're on the internet, so you have to be prepared to deal with people like me and my sexual fantasies that I'm emailing you or whatever it is today. Those people can suck a big fat one. Of course, the other reason that Meghan Markle is in the public eye is because she married into the royal family. And again, part of the decisions leading to that would have been consideration of being in the public eye and how people would view her. But to be honest, I feel like when you're in love, you're in love. And again, that shouldn't be the basis for any kind it shouldn't be like well if you wanted to be this with this person that you love then you should have known that you would have to deal with this kind of i just i know this is a, a definitely a minority opinion it's a loud minority and a gross minority that stick out horribly the kind of people that say these sexist things and send this abuse it is a minority but they are out there some of them are watching this video i guarantee it because i get them in my dms and my emails so i don't give a shit what you think about Meghan markle what you think about the royal family or a documentary or whatever the fuck, it is not okay to write a newspaper column saying, I wish that these awful things that are traumatising and, and sexually abusive and whatever, it is not okay to, to wish that on a person publicly. Fortunately, the public response to this has been largely very negative. Like I say, The Sun had 6,000 formal complaints. We can only hope that he might get sacked. I think that anyone this is the thing I think about Jeremy Clarkson. Anyone who was willing to take him on after the BBC, the BBC severed ties with him should have been, if they were willing to say, okay, he had a couple of violent outbursts, but he was under a lot of stress. We're willing to believe that he has changed and that this won't happen again. At that stage, that's somebody that you should at least keep a very close eye on, keep a monitor on what they're saying. I don't think editorial should have let that through. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about 
The Sun as a newspaper thinking that this is acceptable as well. It's not surprising to me that The Sun would blaze past this misogyny from Jeremy Clarkson, this violence, and just not really think anything of it because that's kind of how they are as well. That Doesn't that just highlight the systemic issues there? I get, because I talk about women's rights and things like that, I, I get told so often that misogyny isn't a thing, it's not real, there's no systemic misogyny, there's, there's nothing cultural. And like, th whenever some news like this comes out, whenever my inbox is flooded with with emails about my tits and, and whatever it is, I just want to scream and be like, it's here in in our faces, just listen. <laughs> I, I mean, I hope he gets fired. I think the sun sucks anyway. I don't think they should have let this through. I, I hope, if nothing else, this stops a few people from buying the sun. Please don't buy the sun. For God's sake, don't buy the sun. Don't follow Jeremy Clarkson. This kind of misogyny is not okay. It's not satire. Jokes and humour are subjective. And I can see how if you, you know, you hate a certain celebrity, you hate how they appear, you can... I can see how people would make this kind of comment and think that it, it can be a laugh and it can be okay. At the very least, it's not okay to do that publicly. It's not okay to do that publicly because you're inciting hatred against that person. They have to read it. It's not okay to, to project your awful fantasies for a real human being somewhere that they can read it and be be hurt by that and it's not okay when you have an enormous fan base to make misogyny seem like just a funny joke that are oh, the the lefties are hurt again because i made a i made a joke about game of thrones no it's violent it's disgusting it's misogynistic and it's about a real human being okay that is the the chief thing here there's a real woman that has had to read that, that somebody is lying awake thinking about how he wants these awful things to happen to her, that a real person has to deal with that. That's fucked up. I don't give a shit who the person is. That's awful. So yeah, fuck, fuck Jeremy Clarkson. Um, I hope he, he drifts into obscurity. I wish that networks would stop picking him up. If nothing else, Jeremy Clarkson is proof that cancel culture does not exist for celebrities of that level. The man's been violent, sexist, racist, and he has successfully <laughs> maintained a, a very high-profile career with a lot of followers. Um, so at least I guess the, there's a statement to be made about that. It's just not okay to treat women this way. Women are disproportionately affected by violence at the hands of men, and it's just not okay to incite that violence. And I don't think it's cool, whether it should be allowed or not, is more, this is more of a subjective thing. So I think the, the first part of it would probably be okay in a newspaper. I wouldn't write a complaint, but for me personally, it's not cool to write a list of the women you hate and, and talk about, you know, and then use that to lead into what you wish would happen to them. Hating a woman on a cellular level because of whatever, a documentary or something is... is just, I, I can't imagine saying those things about Jeremy Clarkson, even in the wake of all the things that he has done and what, what he's done here and what he said. I, I couldn't feel that way about him because that's fucking horrible. It's just not okay to be horrible like that. It, it should be that fucking simple. Why is the world like this? Th that's all I have to say on this. Of course this isn't okay. I hope that the people around Jeremy Clarkson don't react to this like they have to every awful thing he's done, like when he punched that producer, where they just go, oh, everybody makes mistakes, everybody thinks like that. Remember, again, men, especially, I don't know, older British white men, because you're Jeremy Clarkson is putting you in the same category as him as thinking that way, as sharing his thoughts about hating women on a cellular level and wishing that lying awake, wishing this awful stuff on them. He said that all men of his generation feel the same way. Please, please, if you are in the comments, just just share with me that you don't feel that way because sometimes I despair. Fortunately, I don't know what exactly it is that I talk about that attracts this particular audience, but I get quite a few comments from men of Jeremy Clark's generation, especially like British men of his sort of age, and they're always incredibly kind and insightful. I've gotten some really wonderful, wonderful comments from those people, so I know some of you are out there, so please just remind us that Jeremy Clarkson does not speak for you. He is an outlier, 
and, and should not be counted <laughs> like spiders Georg. He's got to go. He's got to go. Okay, D don't fall into the trap of it's just satire, it's just a joke. Look at the far-reaching consequences of making violence and hatred against women a joke, making it okay. It wouldn't be okay if it was a woman writing that and she said that about men. That wouldn't be okay either. But the fact is, this is even worse because he's talking about a group that are disproportionately affected by violence against uh, uh, by men. It's just layers and layers of shit, it just gets worse the more you look at it. So, um, on that note, Merry Christmas. <laughs> I don't know how to, how to come out of this. So yeah, I am going to take a little Christmas break. I'll be back in January for some new stuff. I've got a lot of exciting stuff already booked and planned, some appearances on other channels that I'm really excited about. I will keep you in the loop. We do have membership on this channel now, if you want. Some stupid little emojis of my face. We've got me with a moustache and a little baffy emoji. So if you want to, if you want a few silly emojis and comment priority, it's only a little thing, but I thought it might be, you know, if you're, if you don't use uh, Patreon, if you're not interested in Twitch, but you want some fun emotes or something, then, then that's an option for you. I'm making a plush. Did you know that? Yes, it's true. We're in the process of putting together the first, um, prototype. I can always forget what it's called. Sample? The first sample? There's another word that I can't think of that always escapes my mind. I've got a I've got a mind fart for that particular word. But we're waiting for the first sample to come back from uh, the 2D design is all done. I will show you that on the screen. Um, so down in the comment section, in the comment section? In the description, there will be a link to sign up for email notifications. So if you are interested in getting your hands on an adorable Baffy plush, click that link subscribe to email notifications so you can see as things progress. Very exciting. Before we go, I would like to give a big shout out and a thank you to my colossal quackers and giant chickens over on Patreon. Have yourselves a lovely rest of the year. Have a lovely Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Yule, all of them and more. Sol Invictus, Saturnalia, enjoy them all. And uh, I will see you in the new year for more awesome, fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> see you really soon. Mm -hmm.